is this Europe? Is this France? What is this? Is this a Muslim country? No, in actuality, it is Tajikistan who did this. What did they do? The Tajik Parliament's upper chamber, the Majlisi Milli, approved a bill on 19th June banning the hijab, alien garments, and children celebrating the two Islamic festivals, the two Eids. This is banned in a Muslim country, Tajikistan. What is the solution? How can such a thing happen? How can such an how can such an oppression happen in general? But moreover, this this happens in a Muslim country, a country where the majority are Muslims. They claim to, they claim to be believers. How can they take such a right of the people? How can they violate the command and the covenant of the Almighty without any shame? So, what is the solution? Let's cite hadith since hadiths are telling us about the future. Some of them are narrated to be about the future and what to do. And Muslims, generally speaking, accept the Sahih collections, especially from Bukhari, Sahih Bukhari. So let's read from Sahih Bukhari. We entered upon, upon Ubad ibn Samit while he was sick and we asked him, tell us a hadith from the Prophet and by which Allah make you benefit. He said, the Prophet called us, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and we gave him the Pledge of Allegiance for Islam. And among the conditions on which he took the pledge from us was that we were to listen and obey, both at time when we were active and at the time when we were tired, and our difficult times and our ease, and to be obedient to the ruler and give him his right, even if he did not give us our right. Here, what it means is individual rights, because sometimes um, small rights are dismissed. This is not talking about a big right that's violated, no. This is talking about a small right that can be dismissed. It happens in good and bad governments. Uh, moreover, to continue the hadith. And do not fight him unless we see him having a kufr buah. An open, clear kufr. A clear disbelief. For which we would have a proof of us from Allah. Now this last part is the evidence that this leader cannot be an oppressor. And that's why the understanding is that when he doesn't give you a right, it means he, he's either dismissive, he was either negligent or something like that. It can't be a kufr. Because anyone who doesn't rule by Kitab Allah and commits an injustice otherwise has become a kafir, a fasiq, a criminal, a fajir who deserves hellfire unless he repents. Now, this is the solution. This is the solution. And to cite another hadith that's always dismissed but, uh, but cited by Dr. Muhammad al-Mas'ari, which has became my favorite hadith at the moment due to our times of what's going on in Palestine. The hadith reads, which I've cited before I'm going to cite again for the mu'mineen in the Muslim world who are oppressed and their religion and their dignity is destroyed and tread upon. Obey Quraysh as long as they give you a right. When they ask for mercy, they give mercy. When they ask for, ask for justice, they give justice. And if they do not do that, i.e. if they show kufr buwah, which we can see from the other hadith, then put your swords on your back and eliminate them, annihilate them. And if you do not do that, look, this is the better part of the prophecy. And if you do not do that, you will be like miserable farmers eating from the toils of your own hands. End quote. This will happen to the ummah if they do not enjoy good, forbid evil. If they do not enjoy good, forbid evil and struggle and strive for the truth, there will be miserable. There will be corruption in the land. Evidently there is. Look what Tajikistan is doing. And these hadiths are self-evident. We have to enjoy good for evil, call for justice, implement Kitab Allah in, uh, in, within society. And to link to another hadith, the Quraysh people became very worried, according to Aisha, about the Makhzumiyyah, a lady from Bani Makhzum, who had committed theft, according to this hadith in Bukhari. They said, Nobody can speak in favor of the lady to Allah's Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi wa Alaihi Wasallam And nobody dares to do that except Usama Who is the favorite of Allah's Messenger So when Usama bin Zayd spoke to Allah's Messenger about, about the matter Rasulullah said Do you in intercede with me to violate one of the legal punishments of Allah? Then he got up and addressed the people and said O oh people, the nations before you went astray Because if a noble person committed theft They used to leave him but if a weak person amongst them committed theft, 
They used to inflict the legal punishment on him. And by Allah, if Fatima, the daughter of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, committed theft, then Muhammad will cut off her hand. End quote. Here, look, it's given another prophecy which was linked to the hadith I mentioned earlier. If we do not enjoy good, forbid evil, call for justice, call for truth, implement God's law, make that the mizan, make that the barometer to um, make judgment amongst the people. Then we will be kafirun, we will be misguided, we will fail in the dunya and we will fail in the akhirah. Look what he said. Rasulullah said, the people before us, they got, they were ruined. Why were they ruined? Because they used to implement justice on, on those who were weak, but those who were strong, they used to dismiss it. They were negligent. And now this is what the Muslim Ummah is doing. This is what the Ummah has been doing for centuries. Hence why it is in the state today. Hence why... It, in Palestine, we are getting humiliated. You can see all those pictures, vivid, explicit images of babies and kids tortured. We, you have to enjoy good for evil. This is why you're in the abode of trial, tribulation, hardship, difficulty and calamity. So you can stru struggle and strive for the sake of God, for the sake of truth. This is what Islam is about. And now let's link this hadith in Bukhari narrated by Aisha to the hadith that's narrated by Ubadah, uh, Ubadah ibn Samit. So when Ubadah says... We have to still obey even if our right is violated. This is not a major right. This is not um, an issue that's made intentionally. Or it's not a major issue. Because if it was, it would contradict the other hadiths I mentioned. Which is, Quraysh has to give you a right. And those people were ruined. Why were they ruined? Because they were not implementing justice. So generally speaking, the ruler, the system, the government has to implement justice. If they do not implement justice, they are violating Allah's law. So here in the hadith of Ubaid ibn Samad, we see that if you personally don't get your right, it doesn't mean you're completely violated. It's not an intentional major injustice that's going on. It's probably due to negligence or something like that. Because otherwise it would be a kufr buah to not give the right of the people. And those who do not give the right of the people have violated the right of God and the ummah. And those who do that have shown kufr buwah. And those who show a clear cut, apparent kufr, a disbelief, an ingratitude, a major one, will be fought against if they do not take the advice. So what do the people do in Tajikistan? This is the solution. Advise them. Protest. Faris al-Himar says, don't protest. He doesn't understand uh, the D of deen. He doesn't understand anything to do with Islam. He's violated the religion. Sold it for the dunya like the rabbis of the previous nations. You have to advise them, admonish them, call towards truth of people of Tajikistan, protest, do not accept this. And if they continue to violate you, if you can't use your voice and tongue, you have to use your hand and your arms. As Rasulullah said, if not, you'll be living like miserable farmers. Your situation will get worse and worse and worse until you're humiliated and Allah's religion is destroyed and ruined. This is our message to you, inshallah.